What was your craziest encounter with a wild animal that ended positively? I was reading a book and eating a sandwich alone around 2 a.m. on a picnic bench when I felt something tug at the sandwich in my hand. It was a young raccoon with three or four of its siblings and what I assume was its mother. I was so focused on my book that I completely ignored them surrounding me. I let them have the sandwich but I grabbed the rest of my food and tried to squeeze myself out of the situation without any incident. I was prepared to throw more stuff at them. They ended up just following me around for a few hours after I ate my food. It was difficult not to want to pet them. I didn't, but we definitely interacted with each other. Years ago I would walk home after work on some seldom used train tracks. It was a major shortcut and never saw a train at that time of day for probably like a year. As I got more comfortable walking on the tracks I stupidity had my headphones on both ears when I usually just had one covered. On this day as I was walking I looked up and saw I buck standing at the side of the tracks just staring at me. Not knowing if it was going to charge at me I stopped and took my headphones off. And when I did I heard the train that was coming behind me. This isn't as exciting a story but I always find it pretty cute. While taking a short walk on vacation. I was faced with an animal I'd never seen in real life before walking over the road in front of me a chameleon. Now luckily this road was inaccessible to cars. But bicyclists still used it fairly frequently. And it'd have felt so bad if my new friend would have gotten hit by a vehicle. So I stuck around for half an hour to make sure it safely got to the other side. Lil fellow even briefly latched onto my arm when I tried to get it to the other side faster myself. But it fairly quickly let go. Felt strange. I haven't seen one since but I developed a fondness for chameleons that day. Day of family members who just decide to not be family? My husband was this way with his family. His stepdaughter that he raised for 15 years didn't even know he died. I had no way to contact his family because of his actions. These people feel alone. They have thoughts that they feel they can't talk about with anyone. They feel alone even when they're with people. Have you ever made them feel like they've been heard? One of my cousins walked away over 20 years ago. He didn't even come back when his mother died. We have our suspicions as to why but only he knows the real reason. It's a shame he only lives 10 minutes away. I have very little to do with my mother's side of the family. We were never close growing up. I moved away nearly 30 years ago and never bothered to keep in touch. Of course. It's a two-way street and they never tried to keep in touch. Either. Hell. I'm that guy. I never call anyone and prefer to limit my time with family. I pretty much cut ties and moved to another town. Seemed like the only time they want to talk to me is when they want me to do something anyway. I see them a couple times a year. That's plenty. Does anybody else feel like they should have taken a sledgehammer to their computer because it's stolen so much of their life? But, how else would I waste my life? It's a frying pan fire situation. My first home computer. I gained 10 pounds the first month. The internet was an electronic form of crack. You couldn't get enough to save your soul. It became evident that balance was needed. That was 1995. My computers are how I make a living. I would have starved to death without them. Yes. Many many other shit that has stolen so much of my time I mean years. I feel you. I feel that way towards my phone. I can't stop looking at it but am bored by so much now. Yes. I feel like my computer has taken over my life sometimes. It's easy to get lost in social media or binge watching shows. But I try to set limits and take breaks to do other things I enjoy. Balance is key. They refuse to leave the US for any reason ever? More people need to travel outside of the US, if they have the opportunity. So no. And go to one of them loser countries? No, thank you. I don't but am interested in why you do. Well. I would get into trouble if I refused to leave. I am reluctant to go to more countries than most. But I don't absolutely refuse to go to those countries if there is some reason I should go there. For me it's more like I know I'll never leave the US. Not at all. I've been to Canada, mostly Toronto, a half dozen times. And loved it. The Dominican Republic was awesome. Other than the jarring poverty. I'm tired of US politics. And look forward to getting on a sailboat. And coming back when the boat needs serious repair. It bothers me when I see a parent or adult spanking a child slash kid in public. I think that spanking reinforces that it is okay to hit someone in order to make them do something that you want them to do. Is it ever appropriate? So we should be fine with parents not correcting kids' behavior look what has happened in Chicago teens destroy a block for no reason. And what's with the parents that seem to gloat about it? Whether they are bragging about spanking their kid or speculating what they would do or some particular child was their kid. What you are describing is hitting. A spanking includes time for the adult to calm down. Time out for the child and discussion before any administering of any correction. This is what I grew up with. And I still don't condone spanking. Nope. Hitting someone without their consent is assault. Nobody should assault kids. They're kids. FFS. They should be protected. Not harmed. They should be taught. Not hit. I am deeply, deeply suspicious of anyone who thinks assaulting children is justifiable or necessary. And it's ridiculous that people know and understand that hitting another person is considered assault. But some make excuses when it's children who are getting hit. I think hitting should be avoided and they should be trained to behave with love and kindness. But still there is a question that what if that fails and they still misbehave or do something that can harm them or anyone? 
You can not physically punish out behaviors you do not want from your children and have them be okay afterwards. It directly leads to an entire host of issues like increased aggression with peers' social and mental disturbances and teaches children to lie to get out of physical pain rather than have conversations with parents based on communication and understanding. There are way way too many other ways to get your child to behave as you wish. Corporal punishment is the lazy way out of parenting.